The debate of whether Avril Lavigne is actually punk or not has been a debate that's existed for as long as her career. Commonly referred to as the queen of pop punk, that debate seems more irrelevant as time has progressed. It seems to be widely accepted that she was more punk in image. More than anything, Avril Lavigne is a figurehead of 2000s rock. She served as a gateway for younger people to engage with harder and rawer expressions of emotion and music in an era that was notably dominated by sex fembots like Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera. For a lot of people of her generation and younger generations, Avril Lavigne was an introduction to a more alternative-leaning presence. She repackaged the angst of Alanis Morissette and Sheryl Crow and made it more teen-friendly. Avril's influence can be seen and heard in several pop-punk artists, and she seemed to set off a domino effect the moment she hit the scene. Just as Britney Spears became a sought-after prototype for teen pop, on the opposite side of the spectrum, there was Avril Lavigne. The ripple effects of Avril will go on to help define an entire decade. You can easily point to her influence in the early work of Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Pink, Hayley Williams of Paramore fame, Olivia Rodrigo, and Kelly Clarkson, for example. Many Disney stars would also employ the Avril template in their earlier work, from Hannah Montana to Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato. She also had a lane of artists that were directly marketed after her following her debut. Fifi Dobson Fifi Dobson was initially signed to famed label Jive Records and was intended to be a pop star in the vein of Britney Spears. They even nicknamed her Brandy Spears, but she refused to go that route and left the label. She eventually signed to Island Records and they supported her pop rock dreams. Coming out only a year after Avril debuted, she mirrored Avril in many ways. She was also from Canada, young, and they had similar stylings at certain points, and they definitely were intended to capture the same audience. Fifi Dobson is a black woman and was a black girl, so at times she was unfortunately boxed in. Her self-titled debut album released in 2003 was a big hit in her home country of Canada, fronted by singles Bye Bye Boyfriend and Take Me Away. While they're certainly overlapping in their images and sound, I would say that Fifi's music generally went a little harder. Her second album Sunday Love was slated to be released in 2005. It was ultimately shelved. It was too hardcore, Dobson said about her follow-up album. Nobody knew what to do with me. In the meantime, Fifi began writing songs for other young stars who were doing their own rock-inspired impressions, such as Star All Over by Miley Cyrus, As a Blonde by Selena Gomez in the Scene, and Don't Let It Go to Your Head by Jordan Sparks. The success of her songwriting reinstilled confidence into Fifi and her ideas. Her 2010 album Joy went into a more pop direction. It was compared to the work of Rihanna. Present day, Avril and Fifi are actually very good friends. They perform together many times, and Fifi has opened for Avril on tour. Artists like Willow have gone on to cite Fifi as an inspiration. Hilary Duff Hilary Duff is an interesting case because she definitely has the essence of Britney embedded into her music career. I mean, she is a Disney Channel star after all, very clean and PG-13. She certainly wasn't as brash as Avril. However, her earlier musical stylings definitely benefited from a post-Avril world. She was an even cleaner alternative to Avril. I guess the best descriptor would be if early Britney's PR image and early Avril's musical styling had a musical child, it would likely sound and look a lot like the music of early Hilary Duff. In 2003, Hilary Duff released her debut album Metamorphosis, an album that would pave the way for the Disney Channel actor turned pop star model. The music served as an extension of the success of Hilary Duff and her success with the Lizzie McGuire series, and sonically was indebted to the trends of the time. Just one year prior to Metamorphosis, Avril had unleashed her debut album Let Go Into The World. The album not only broke Avril into the mainstream, but her famed production and songwriting team The Matrix as well, who was brought into the mix during the Let Go sessions to help Avril find a direction, as well as come up with more wide appealing songs. And thus they did. Their sessions resulted in the most iconic songs of Avril's career, from Skater Boy to I'm With You and The Everlasting Complicated. The Matrix would also take on production and writing duties for Hillary's debut album, which resulted in some songs that sound very close to Avril's debut work, so much so that you could outright imagine Avril performing them, such as the lead single from the album, So Yesterday, which sounds pretty similar to Complicated in composition. The work of The Matrix was often highlighted during the promotional campaign of the album. 
due to their work on Avril's album, and Duff said, There are definitely people I respect and I love their music. But there was never really an artist that I said I want to be just like them, I want to be just like myself. For her second album in 2004, simply titled Hilary Duff, Hilary and her team sought to go in a more mature direction. It's certainly a bit darker and a bit more mature, but it doesn't really shake that Disney bubblegum sheen. Later speaking about the album in an interview, she admitted that her label had control and she wasn't able to fully go in the direction that she wanted to. She said the production had been mastered and sounds really pretty. If I could change it, I would, and it would sound less pop. My name is Hilary Duff, and I don't know why I don't get to make Hilary Duff music. Her second album also sounded a lot like Avril's music. As for Hilary and Avril themselves, they were involved in a pretty big but now forgotten feud. During the feud, Hilary insisted that she was a massive Avril fan, and that she even owned her CD. The beat started over a quote that Avril says is fake. The quote claimed that Avril did not like her fans dressing as her, and told them that they needed to get a life. Hilary responded to this supposed fake quote by saying that Avril needs to appreciate her fans more. This infuriated Avril who said it wasn't Hillary's place to speak on her. On one occasion, Avril said if Duff doesn't shut her mouth, then I'll shut it for her. She told People in March of 2004. Hillary is more of an actress than a musician. Avril was ready to throw down. Hillary's rest responded to Avril by saying, Hillary is sorry that her remark got blown out of proportion. She's never met Avril, but she is a huge fan of her music. So who do you want to see slimed? Um, Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff? <laughs> I hope I don't get slimed. Our correspondent Lauren Mayhew found there just might be some truth to Avril's feud with Hillary Duff. It all started when Hillary said that Avril needs to appreciate her fans more. I didn't like what she said. It was none right. of her business. Right. And she has no place in, she, she can't say anything. The beef resulted in countless remarks traded throughout the years and even alleged showdowns between their teams at events with each team threatening to leave if one of the artists didn't leave. It was a pretty serious beef when you consider pop beefs. Though they've never formally squashed their beef, it does seem to be water under the bridge, and Hillary is definitely a big fan and inspired by Avril. Ashley Simpson While Ashley's sister Jessica operated in a lane more in line with Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera, Ashley was on the opposite side of the spectrum. In fact, labels initially declined to sign Ashley because they thought she wanted to be exactly like her sister Jessica. She eventually signed to Geffen Records. Ashley saw a familiar alternative during that time, and that's of course the lane that Avril paved the way for. Ashley took extensive steps to separate herself from her sister, including dyeing her hair, leaning into a more rock-inspired sound, and filming a reality TV show called The Ashley Simpson Show to coincide with the release of her album to give a more personalized and individualistic experience into her music. The reality show chronicled the making of the album. In 2004, Ashley's debut album Autobiography was released to great success, fronted by singles such as Piece of Me, Shadow, and La La. Out of all the acts to make a splash in a post-Avril world, I would say Ashley is most on par with Avril in her earlier work. It's confessional, hooky, similar production standards and performances. Her work is definitely not bad despite the sentiment that has followed her. As many of you know, her career and credibility would come tumbling down after her infamous lip syncing incident on SNL in 2004, the same year her album was released. In the performance, she awkwardly hopped around while her playback track skipped, and she was ripped to shreds and became a laughing stock. While Ashley Simpson was never the strongest singer, people took the SNL incident as an opportunity to dismiss her entirely. Avril even chimed in on the Ashley incident. There are a lot of people out there today who have become stars or famous musicians. I wouldn't really define them as a star, with a record only because they have connections and only because they have money, and for the wrong reasons, Levine said. And it sucks. Actually, I know for a fact there are some young female artists who don't even sing on their own records, and who don't sing live, and that is pathetic. I got signed because of my voice. That's what L.A. Reid signed me on. He said, wow, you are only 15 and you can really sing. I'm going to sign you and I've never lip-synced once. When you consider Ashley's ascension to fame, her ridicule makes much more sense. Career-wise, she had the reality TV show PR someone like Paris Hilton. The connection of Jessica Simpson, so people automatically viewed her as a Nepo baby, 
and then the lightweight of her music. Her circumstances never really allowed her to be taken seriously, no matter how hard she tried. But in hindsight, most can agree that the reaction was overblown. The media acted like she was the second coming of Millie Vanilli. Amy Studd Amy Studd was often called the UK's answer to Avril Lavigne. At the age of 15, she began to pursue music, and eventually her songs reached Simon Fuller, and she was signed to his management company. She landed a record deal with Polydor Records, and released hit songs like Just a Little Girl and Misfit, which sound a lot like Let Go outtakes. Her album False Mouse, released in 2003, was a moderate success. Amy received a request by Sheryl Crow to do a cover of her classic All I Wanna Do song, which Sheryl sung backgrounds on the song. The song missed the top 20 in the UK just by one position, and Amy was eventually dropped by her label due to poor sales. Lily X. In a review for one of their albums, the band is described by saying, If one Avril Lavigne is good, then four Avril Lavigne should be awesome. Lilix was essentially a band of teenage girls with an Avril Lavigne-esque sound, appeal, and style. They were also from Canada, and signed to Maverick Records, Madonna's record label. Alanis Morissette was also famously signed to the label. The band was originally called Tiger Lily. They underwent several lineup changes. Their debut album was released in 2003, titled Falling Uphill. The band never broke through in a major way, and their debut single It's About Time was produced and written by Avril collaborators The Matrix, lending a let go soundscape to the band. Lindsay Lohan Lindsay Lohan was on fire in the 2000s. She became the queen of teen flicks and was a tabloid fixture. The natural move was for her to also venture into music. She signed a deal with legendary label Casablanca. Lindsay has a rather husky voice, and she decided to use her huskiness over a pop rock landscape, though some of her music also incorporated dance pop sounds. Her platinum debut album Speak, released in 2004, was largely compared to Avril Lavigne, and one listen to the album and it's clear to see why. There's blatant Avril ripoffs. Symptoms of You tries to be with you, and there's slices of dance pop like the hit single Rumors. Otherwise, a majority of the album is indebted to the brazen Avril-like guitar pop and soft rock. Given Lindsay's image, I'm not sure many people expected her to go in this direction with her music. Her acting career image certainly made it seem like she was set to do a more glitzy dance pop direction, but she sought to make her music career an entire different entity. Her pop career was short-lived, but her album served as a cool time capsule into Lindsay Lohan during her tabloid prime. No matter the skepticism hurled at Avril when she first appeared on the scene, her influence both instantaneously and continuously is undeniable.